An update on Vince McMahon's planned match for WrestleMania 38. We have some information when it comes to The Undertaker's WWE Hall of Fame induction. And where is Elias? What's going on with him? All this and more in today's WWE News. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into today in the world of WWE. So let's start off talking about the chairman, the CEO of WWE, Vince McMahon. Now, the story came out last week, at the end of last week, that Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee is reportedly going to happen at WrestleMania. And... It's reportedly listed in the internal schedule for the show. Now, in an update, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter is reporting that although the 76-year-old WWE chairman will be advertised for a match at the upcoming showcase of the Immortals, he is not expected to take any bumps in the match in what is being described as a, quote, complete smoke and mirrors event. Meltzer noted that the match was, quote, confirmed to be on the books for the WrestleMania lineup as of Sunday evening. The seeds for the match will reportedly be planted when McMahon appears on the Pat McAfee show this coming Thursday. With McMahon unlikely to take any bumps in the match with Pat McAfee, there is speculation among fans on social media that Austin Theory will be the one to wrestle on behalf of the WWE boss. Theory has been in an on-screen storyline with McMahon for the last several months. The news of McMahon starting a storyline with McAfee was first reported by John Pollock of Post Wrestling last Friday. Of course, McMahon's actual last match was at WrestleMania 26, where he lost to Hall of Famer Bret Hart. He did have a... They didn't call it a match. We had a fight with CM Punk on WWE television in 2012. This is kind of what I spoke about the other day when we first spoke about this um, Vince McMahon match that was going to happen at WrestleMania. Now, it's funny because when, we, when we've spoken about this, there are so many people that are saying, oh, it's not going to happen. What, Vince McMahon's going to wrestle a match at WrestleMania? No, it's not going to happen. And my response to that is, it is going to happen, but he's not going to have a match. Like, they're going to advertise it as Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. Vince McMahon will come out in his vest. He will still show that even at the age of 76 years old, <laughs> being a really old man, he still has giant arms and veins and all that kind of stuff because it's Vince McMahon. He likes to do that kind of thing. He'll come out like he did at WrestleMania in 2010, like he's done before. He'll come out and he'll go, whoa, 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 even though this is going to be, you know, I, I will know this was advertised and I know they said that I was going to be involved in this match, but... Austin Theory then comes out and basically we have Austin Theory versus Pat McAfee in some kind of a match. Then I would think, realistically, Pat McAfee, I know he's wrestled matches. He wrestled a great match against Adam Cole at NXT TakeOver 30. I think it was in 2020. And he wrestled in the War Games match as well uh, against the Undisputed Era and all that kind of stuff. He's done, you know, he can he can work. Um, even though that's the case, logic would suggest that Austin Theory would beat the hell out of Pat McAfee, then Vince McMahon would come in and maybe do the cover, and then Vince McMahon wins and holds at the hand of Austin Theory or something like that. To be honest, the entire segment is just PR, it's just promotion, it's just, okay, how can we get people talking on social media about the show? How can we sell tickets for the show? How can we feature Austin Theory? Because the whole Vince McMahon-Austin Theory storyline, even though it's kind of bizarre, and I don't really know if it really has truly elevated Austin Theory in the way that they've wanted it to, there is no doubt that having a segment at WrestleMania involving Vince McMahon having a match at the age of 76 years of age with Austin Theory in there and Pat McAfee, that will get people talking and it will certainly have a somewhat of a spotlight on Austin Theory. And that's what it's designed to do. So the idea that there's going to be smoke and mirrors in this match, you know where it's going. Now, I know that some people have seen the quotes about it being a smoke and mirrors match and going, smoke and mirrors? Cody Rhodes, anyone? Cody Rhodes? I don't think... I don't think Cody Rhodes would be involved. I don't know. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors is just a phrase used to be like, okay, it's just they're going to advertise it and imply it's going to be one thing and then it's actually going to be another and they're going to give the impression that Vince McMahon is having a match when he really isn't. And WWE, I know some people go, that's false advertising, WWE wouldn't do that. WWE advertised Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks for SummerSlam last year when they knew full well for weeks that that match was not happening. And they did it anyway. So don't rule out anything <laughs> when it comes to WWE false advertising. They've had Steve Austin in WWE Championship matches that they knew were going to happen. Survivor Series, right? Remember that? when That whole situation when they knew that wasn't going to happen. So they have no issue when it comes to false advertising, anything thing of that nature so 
I suppose, I mean, if you wanted to book it properly, I said it before, if you really wanted to make a statement and wanted to, you know, build on the reality of Cody Rhodes going to another company, being an EVP, and then coming back to WWE, how would you how would you do that and how would you play on that for the future? You would have the WWE chairman and CEO in the ring for a match at WrestleMania, throwing his weight around, throwing his authority around as the owner of the company, and then you would have the returning Cody Rhodes come into the ring as an AEW EVP, former AEW EVP, and I know they say Vince isn't going to take any bumps, but maybe you would have Cody Rhodes, I don't know, do a disaster kick off the rope or something like that, something that Vince can kind of, you know, fall to the floor kind of situation, maybe not take a crossroads, but do something of that nature, and then Cody Rhodes saves Pat McAfee, and he, he took out the WWE chairman in his opening night, and that would be a massive moment, I mean, talk about WrestleMania moments, that would be huge, whether or not that will happen, I don't know. But we're not going to get a proper Vince McMahon doing... <laughs> he never did it anyway. But we're never going to get Vince McMahon taking proper bumps like he did against, like, say, Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 19 or anything like that. We were never going to get that. We're not going to get like we got at WrestleMania 22 where Shawn Michaels just beat the hell out of Vince McMahon. We're not going to get that either. But it's WWE being a promotion, trying to sell tickets, trying to get people talking about the biggest show of the year. And it's a spectacle WrestleMania is built on spectacle, built on matches that you go, I have no idea what they're going to do for this one. It's going to be a complete car crash and car wreck, but I'm willing to see what they do. That's what this match is going to be. And uh, despite the spoken mirrors, it's going to be very interesting. Um, let's talk about The Undertaker, because, of course, The Undertaker is going to be in the Hall of Fame this year. Now, several people have said, actually, The Undertaker should be the solo entrant into the Hall of Fame. If there's ever a year where it should just be one person going into the Hall of Fame and nobody else, a class of his own, maybe it should be The Undertaker in Texas. And we know that the Hall of Fame is going to be taking place after SmackDown on the Friday before WrestleMania. So maybe that's what they're going to do. It's just going to be an hour and it's going to be The Undertaker. Well, The Undertaker is not going to be a solo inductee into this year's WWE Hall of Fame class, according to a report by WrestleVotes on Twitter. The WrestleVotes Twitter handle reported on Sunday that although the idea of the dead man going solo into the Hall of Fame was considered by WWE officials, additional names, quote, will be announced soon, potentially starting tomorrow, today, Monday. So... It doesn't look like The Undertaker is going to be a solo inductee into the Hall of Fame, which, I mean, I don't know if I really expected him to be. I just thought if there was ever anyone that was going to be, it would probably would be him. But, you know, the Hall of Fame, you can have your opinions on it, whether it means anything, whether it doesn't mean anything, all that kind of stuff. Who else would join him? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't know who would join him. Sometimes in these kind of situations where you've got the big name like The Undertaker, it doesn't really matter. There are still names that I would love to see in there. Demolition, you know, those kind of names are obvious. So we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see who, who else gets joined in. Maybe it'll be other people that were based in Texas. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a turn, but let me know. Let me know who you would like to see added with The Undertaker in this year's Hall of Fame class, certainly. Um, this is an interesting story talking about Elias. Yes, Elias. Remember him? Well, a new report surrounding WWE superstar Elias has emerged. And in it, it's been reported that he is still without any creative direction in the company. This comes from Ringside News. It was described as, quote, creative purgatory for Elias, where a member of the WWE creative team, quote, doesn't remember the last time his name came up. It's been so long. Now, Elias has not wrestled since his Symphony of Destruction match, which was a loss to Jackson Riker, who was no longer with the company, on the July 19, 2021 edition of Monday Night Raw. Now, multiple vignettes for the rebranding of the former 24-7 champion began airing the following August, but eventually they stopped. It was later reported that WWE had no end plan for the vignettes, and WWE just filmed them to kill off Elias' musician gimmick. Now... It was also noted that previously Elias had a rebranding scheduled, but the new look was reportedly similar to WWE Hall of Famer Randy Savage with colourful trunks and a beard. WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon and officials close to him reportedly did not like these changes and plans for the rebranding were nixed. So essentially the situation is with Elias. They killed off the Elias gimmick of playing the guitar and the musician and all that kind of stuff with the idea that we don't really know where it's going. So Elias goes, okay, I'll change up my look. Changes up his look. They go, we don't like that. And then just nothing's happened since then. Nothing. 
And I don't know what's going to happen with him. Elias is a talent. I, I liked the gimmick. And I know some people said, well, the gimmick was running out of steam and all that kind of stuff. Personally, I felt that the gimmick was really over with live audiences. And he suffered because obviously there was no live audiences for over a year. And I thought if there's only going to be someone that's really going to benefit of having a live audience back, it's going to be Elias. And the irony being that the live audience came back, then he took him off television and changed his gimmick. So unless, I suppose, he comes up with something, or most likely, eventually, it'll go one of two ways. Eventually, the WWE creative team will think of something. They give him a gimmick, or Vince McMahon himself, and this is how it works. Vince McMahon or Bruce Pritchard find a gimmick that they come up with that isn't that great, but the creative team doesn't have the balls to tell them it isn't that great. They give it to Elias, and then it sucks, then he probably leaves. Or he gets released in the end because he's not doing anything and budget cuts, right? So I hope that they find something for him. I'm, a, I'm an Elias fan, but looking at it right now, I mean, it doesn't look promising, does it? Um, and maybe he just comes back with... It wouldn't surprise me either, frankly, that he comes back with the old Elias gimmick and they're like, didn't you kill it off? Well, I'm back. Elias is back. Elias has been resurrected, right? I wouldn't be surprised if that happened either. So we'll, we'll wait and see with that one. Finally, Corey Graves has hinted that a, quote, familiar face is returning for WrestleMania 38, with WWE WrestleMania 38 happening on Saturday, April 2nd and Sunday, April 3rd in Dallas. The capacity is expected to reach over 100,000 on each night. With that large of a crowd, it's being reported that WWE has been pulling out all the stops to try and sell out the show, including contacting WWE Hall of Famer Stone Cold Steve Austin for a potential return to in-ring action for the first time in 19 years to face Kevin Owens. This is with Kevin Owens' recent jibes at Texas and how much he hates Texas on Monday Night Raw in recent weeks. To add even more to the potential return at WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes announced his departure from AEW and has been referenced by several WWE superstars on Raw last week, including The Edge, The Miz, um, although the son of Dusty didn't appear at the prior weekend's Elimination Chamber event in Saudi Arabia, Rhodes was in fact scheduled to travel to the WWE Performance Center to film footage for his return. With those two names, uh, big names, reportedly on their way back to WWE, Corey Graves teased, quote, a familiar face returning to WWE between now and WrestleMania 38 during the latest episode of WWE's After the Bell podcast. The Raw announcer added that it's a situation where only those who know, know, and that he's adding more gas to the fire for a potential big-time return. This is what he had to say, quote, and who knows, if the rumours do in fact prove to be true, we may have another familiar face back in the fold between now and the showcase of the Immortals, Corey Graves said. This is one of the ones where, if you know, you know, I'm not going to speak to it any longer. I'm going to feed the rumour mill. That's what I'm doing. I'm feeding the rumour mill. I'm stoking the flames and I'm pouring gas on the fire. If the rumours are true, I couldn't be more thrilled. So I know people will say, well, he could, he could be talking about... Um, Steve Austin, or we're talking about Cody Rhodes. I tend to lean into thinking he's probably talking about Cody Rhodes. The, for me, the, the 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 Cody Rhodes one is more confirmed than the Steve Austin one. Frankly, I think we still don't really have any confirmation that Steve Austin's you know decided to do it. And if there's been any confirmation for it, where on the flip side, we know that Cody Rhodes is going to WWE. Whether or not anything signed is another thing. But we know Cody's going back. I think the Austin one, and because people will say, well, if, if the Steve Austin thing's not confirmed, why is Kevin Owens doing his stuff on television? It's because there are plenty of people from Texas. <laughs> if Steve Austin doesn't come back for the match, a proper match, they could still do people from Texas coming out and being up Kevin Owens. So Kevin Owens could come out and say some stuff. Maybe Steve Austin comes out at the end, but it's not a proper match. But you could have Shawn Michaels come out. You could have JBL come out. You could have The Undertaker come out. You could have Steve Austin. You could have all of these Texas legends. You could have uh, one, the Von Erich come out, right? You know, you could have Kevin Von Erich come out. You could do You could do so. You could do anything, right? Uh, plenty of people historically come from Texas and are big in pro wrestling. Even Mick Foley's from Long Island, but he's huge in the Texas Territory. Right, he could he could come out. There are so many people that could come out and uh, attack Kevin Owens. So I think he's probably referring to uh, to the Cody Rhodes one because that seems more confirmed. The only you know consideration I suppose is who would Cody Rhodes face between now and WrestleMania. I look at that Vince McMahon thing like we were talking about earlier and say, well, that could be an angle. That definitely could be an angle there. And that's something I think worth considering. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on today's WWE news stories in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestle News 365. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon.
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.